the riskiest part of the programme. It's Barrage the Farage with members of the audience. I have their names, but I have no idea what they're going to ask me. Tony, you're up first. Good evening. Good evening, Nigel. My question surrounds around retail in the UK today. Last week, the CEO of Memoness tried to pressure the Chancellor to abandon online tax in a vain effort for the government to re-energise the high street in the UK. Over the past 10 years, many changes have taken place in retail here in the UK. Nigel, I've got two questions. Mm -hmm. Do you believe it's right that the councils and governments to re-energise high streets in view of the decline of retail here in the UK? And more, a prophecy from yourself, where do you see retail in the UK over the next 10 years? OK. Prophecy. Goodness gracious me. Um, the high street's really important, and it's really important socially. You know, my village that I'm from, the last shop to close was the post office. Yeah. Now it's the church and the pub. Um, and there's nowhere else that people actually meet. So community loses out massively when high streets and shops go. Look, there was a trend that's been going on for years, buying online, having things delivered to our door. Uh, you know, the pandemic accelerated that massively. Uh, but, you know, you can be an online retailer with a warehouse in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Your overheads are relatively cheap. Yeah. If you're over one of the big global companies, you're probably not paying that much tax either. Um, and I think something much more radical has to happen with high streets and business rates. Frankly, if we're going to save the high street, we're going to have to abolish business rates to make sure those high streets yeah. and those shops exactly. thrive. I can't see any other way around it. My prophecy is this. I think the days of us going to the local big city as a family, as a group, going to the department store are gone. I think our cities, our inner cities, will become places that people start to live. And that will bring a new kind of retail. Yeah. It'll bring grocers, it'll bring butchers, it'll bring little corner stores. So I actually think that the, the, the almost erosion of the big shop and people coming to live in the centre will see more new small shops. So I don't think the future of retail is, is, is absolutely over. I really, really don't. But to save the high street, it's going to need some very, very radical government thinking. Thank How do you, you feel? Thank you. How do you feel? Well, we've seen many changes, haven't we? We've mm. seen the decline of department stores. Online is not a price advantage for customer. It is purely a delivery advantage for customer. Yeah. The problem that British retail have is, number one, business rates. Sadly, we've got the big five major supermarkets in this country, all jostling. Their whole business generated round market share and their buying capacity is generated round market share. Yeah, it's tough. One year, 18 months ago, Mr Sainsbury was trying to merge with Asda. That would never happen because the big suppliers, Lever Brothers, Procter & Gamble's, Kellogg's would all close shop because it would domineer their buying capacity. Yeah, it's tough for the small guy, but hey, we're on the side of the small guy and the small yes. woman. We really are. Thank you very much for your question, David. Um, <laughs> let's go to uh, Rachel is next. Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, Nigel, you've said you used to be a metals trader, mm. but I was just wondering, what other jobs have you done? First job I ever did uh, was caddying at the golf course. Second job I did was serving behind the bar in the pub after hours. Oh, I didn't say that, did I? Um, the, uh, I worked behind a bar a bit as well. And yeah, when I was 18, I went to work straight in the city of London in the commodities business. Uh, and we traded and dealt in copper, aluminium, lead, um, zinc, nickel, tin, all the industrial metals. And that gave me a real sense of business footing. Um, I understood a bit about how companies ran. I, run, I ran my own firm in that industry for nine years. Um, I had customers that I spoke to from all over the world. And it was kind of what made me think, why are we tying ourselves completely up with our European neighbours when there's a great big world out there and like two billion of them are in Commonwealth countries. So I think those jobs really shaped my view. Politics, never my ambition at all. Never intended to go into politics, but I was so driven 
but this idea we should be an independent country, that that's what I did. And I guess I found that I was, you know, fairly comfortable talking on my feet, unafraid to stand out from the crowd. Um, and that's why I'm here now on GB News, because in UKIP and the Brexit Party, we disrupted British politics. And I want to help this channel disrupt the media. It needs it. <laughs> Hi, Greg. Hi, Greg. Hi, Nigel. Yeah, um, just going on from the conversation earlier about HS2, mm. going right through Buckinghamshire, um, I, haven't pretty, I haven't got a problem with that. What I have got a problem with is, is those trains going to be rumbling through here at breakneck speed, but this town doesn't um, um, prosper from it because there's no railway station. It takes almost an hour to get into London from here. Our terminus is 35 miles away. That's a disgrace. Yeah, I mean, HS2 is, look, let's be honest about it. HS2 is really good for wealthy business people yeah. who, want to, who want to go to London for the day and come back or go to Manchester for the day and come back. And the idea that it will drive jobs from London to Manchester, it'll probably do the opposite. It'll probably do the opposite. In France, the TGV drove even more business to Paris. So for you guys, you know, we can talk about the Chilterns, we can talk about ancient woodland, you know, some parts of modernization are ugly and unpleasant, but they're necessary and we have to live with them. Power stations or whatever it may be. All right? we, motorways, we accept that. We can't live without it. I just can't, frankly, see the point of HS2. I can get on at Euston and be in Manchester Piccadilly in the heart of the business district in two hours and five minutes. Building that at a cost of 150 billion to say 20 minutes, when actually it's quite comfy on the train, I can't see what it's all about. There are more people working from home anyway. Buckinghamshire, Warwickshire, and counties like that are big losers. I've been opposed to it, Greg, from the very start, but for some reason, Boris and Rishi want to continue. I don't know. I don't know. And I've quickly got time for two more. Daphne, hello. <laughs> Nigel, um, do you choose which areas you come to for this program, or do you wait until you're invited? Uh, no, we. Uh, no, we. I mean, if we waited for the invitations, it could be a long time. <laughs> we, we, yeah. No, we've chosen where to go. I mean, look, Aylesbury's a great place to come and do this show. Do you know why? Not just because they're nice people, but because it was 52, 48, leave, remain in the referendum. This is the heart of England, and I thought it was a very good place to come to. But no, we're going to go to. You know, we visited. I mean, already we've been to Port Talbot, we've been to Hull, uh, we've been to Medway, we've been. So we've been to a mixture of Labour areas. Areas, conservative areas, Lib Dem areas. Um, so, you know, we will keep on doing this every fortnight for as long as we possibly can. I hope Thank you. you. <laughs> and finally, John, the last one. Hi, John. Good evening, Nigel. Good evening, everybody. What chance of getting Donald Trump on one of these shows or perhaps on Talking Points? <laughs> well, well. <laughs> If it was talking pints, it would be Diet Coke with him. He's never touched alcohol in his life. He's, I think he saw the rest of his family drinking a bit more than that. And his brother died very early of alcoholism. So he doesn't drink, which is probably very sensible if that's in the family. Um, and I did interview him for GB News. I was there back in November. Um, at some point, let me tell you this, at some point, I'll get Trump on the show. All right, don't you worry about that, I'll do it. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.